Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvasesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasade Gaurabhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book, the pastimes of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we're on chapter number 46, where Uddhava is visiting Vrindavan. So, uh, Uddhava had been requested by Lord Krishna to come to Vrindavan and to bring a message for the people in Vrindavan, especially the gopis. So Uddhava first met with Nanda Maharaj. And of course he met with Mother Yashoda also. And they were very happy to hear from Uddhava. So he was congratulating them on being such nice devotees of Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada writes, he said, this is the result of Krishna conscious practice. If we practice Krishna consciousness now in this body and while we're in a healthy condition mm. and with a good mind, then it will help it will help us in at the end of life and in the next life we have to practice chanting the maha mantra hare krishna mantra and this will help us to fix the mind on Krishna at the time of death. So we have to we have to chant in the we have to chant in the in well, we're healthy. We can't wait until the time of death to chant. We have to chant now, before, we, before you get too old and before you get too sick, you have to practice chanting. And if we do this, then our lives will become successful. But if we're always thinking about 
material life and about enjoying material world, then it won't work. Then we won't be able to chant Hare Krishna at the time of death. Instead, at the time of death, we will only think about the material things we were doing. And the result will be we have to take another material body in the material world. And that means we will have to suffer all the miseries of material life again. But if we become Krishna conscious now, then at the time of death we can also be Krishna conscious. So all the people of Vrindavan, they were always absorbed, they were always thinking of Krishna. We see the example Maharaj, Nanda, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, the gopis, they were always thinking of Krishna. So we want to try to follow in their footsteps, even a little. If we can just follow even a little, then our life can be successful. And we'll be able to go to the spiritual world, Vaikuntha. So Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, Uddhava is speaking to them. He says, Mother, my dear Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, you have fixed your mind fully on Krishna. And that form of the Supreme Lord, that is the, that is the, where the impersonal Brahman comes from. Right, the, the Brahma Jyoti comes from the body of the Supreme Lord. So because you're all, you're always in ecstasy thinking of Krishna and Balaram. So you don't have to do any any pious activities. There's nothing else for you to do. You've already you're already doing the highest thing. So I brought a message from Krishna. And he's telling, he wants to tell you that very soon he's coming back to Vrindavan. And Lord Krishna says he wants you to be satisfied when he comes there with his personal presence. 
ทรงมีความสุขอยู่เสมอเวลาที่คริสนาเนี่ยทรงกลับมา Krishna said he's definitely coming back to Vrindavan. Krishna เนี่ยทรงพูดอย่างมั่นใจว่ายังไงพระองค์เนี่ยจะทรงกลับมาที่ Vrindavan แน่นอน But he has to finish some business in Mathura. แต่ว่าท่านเนี่ยจะต้องทำภารกิจบางอย่างให้เสร็จเส้นเสียก่อนที่มัทุรา And he promises, this is what's going to happen. แต่ท่านก็ให้คำสัญญาว่าท่านเนี่ยจะปฏิบัติตาม So Uddhava tells Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda that you two, meaning you two, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, you are the best among all who are fortunate. Now, Tan ก็บอกว่าท่านทั้งคู่เนี่ยท่านทั้งคู่นาทีนี้หมายถึงคุณแม่ยาโชดากันนันดมาราบอกว่าเป็นบุคคลที่โชคดีที่สุดในบรรดาพวกที่ถือว่าโชคดีในบรรดาผู้ที่มีโชคท่านถือว่าโชคดีที่สุด So Uddhava says I I hope I don't want you to feel too unhappy about Krishna not being here in Vrindavan just now แล้วก็อุดาก็บอกว่าข้าเนี่ยไม่อยากให้พวกท่านเนี่ยเศร้าโศกมากขณะที่คริสนาไม่อยู่ You can already feel Krishna's presence 24 hours a day. Oh, Han, you can already feel the presence of Krishna 24 hours a day. So he's going to come and see you very soon. Oh, Krishna is going to come and see you very soon. Actually, Krishna is present everywhere, and he is in everyone's heart. ความจริงเนี่ยกระชาทรงปรากฏอยู่ทุกคนทุกแห่งแล้วก็ทรงอยู่ในหัวใจของทุกทุกคน Just like fire is present in wood เหมือนกับไฟที่มีอยู่ในไม้ Everyone equally everyone uh, Krishna sees everyone equal กระชาเนี่ยทรงเห็นทุกคนเสมอภาค Yeah. Just like fire is in wood, Krishna is in everyone's heart as a super soul. So he sees everyone equally. He does not see someone as his enemy, nor does he see someone as his friend. พระองค์เนี่ยทรงไม่คิดกับใครว่าอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นศัตรูของพระองค์หรือว่าอันนี้เป็นเพื่อนของพระองค์ And he does not see someone as lower, lower than him, and he doesn't see anyone as higher than him. แต่ท่านก็ไม่ได้มองใครว่าต่ำกว่าพระองค์หรือว่าไม่ได้มองใครว่าสูงกว่าพระองค์ Actually, he doesn't have any father or mother. ความจริงแล้วเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงไม่มีคุณพ่อหรือว่าคุณแม่ And he doesn't have any brothers or relatives. And he doesn't need society or friendship and love. He, he doesn't have a material body like us. We have a material body, but not Krishna. So he never appears or takes birth. We take birth. We appear. We're ordinary humans, but Krishna is not like that. He doesn't appear in higher or lower species of life. But we are forced. We are forced. Sometimes we take birth in a lower species and sometimes in a higher species. 
ตรงกันข้ามกับเราของเราเนี่ยถูกบังคับให้บางครั้งเนี่ยเราต้องไปเกิดในชั้นที่ต่ำกว่าบางครั้งเราก็เกิดในเป็นสิ่งมีชีวิตที่สูงส่ง It depends on our previous activities ทุกอย่างเนี่ยก็จะขึ้นอยู่กับผลแห่งการกระทำของเราในชาติที่แล้ว So Krishna comes in this world by his internal potency. He has, and Krishna can give. He has to give. He comes to this world. His purpose in coming to this world is to protect his devotees. So he never gets influenced by the material energy. So when he comes in the material world, he appears like an ordinary person. And we think he's an ordinary person. We think he's under the the material energy like us. But this is our mistake. Krishna is never under the material energy. Krishna controls the material energy. And he's never affected by the material nature. At the same time, some Krishna can create and he can maintain and he can. Finish, dissolve the whole creation. So we make the mistake that we look at Krishna and Balaram and we think, oh, they are ordinary human beings. Just like just like we see the whole world moving around. We're, think, we're thinking the world is moving around us. This is our illusion. So we have to understand Krishna, that he is the personality of Godhead. And he's no, nobody, he's no one's son. He is everyone's father and mother and supreme controller. So we have to be convinced about that. We should not, we should not have any doubts about Krishna's position. So everything we see in this material world, we may think it is real. Everything which is already here, 
And everything which is beyond our senses and mind. Everything that exists, actually, everything that we see that exists, actually, it doesn't really exist. And it will, it, it won't exist in the future. What doesn't matter, something is the smallest or something is the biggest. They're not real. Nothing is independent of Krishna. Doesn't matter how small or how big, everything is dependent on Krishna. So everything rests in Krishna. But Krishna doesn't get touched by anything. So Uddhava was speaking to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda like this. So Uddhava talked to them the whole night about Krishna. So in the morning, the gopis were preparing for the morning arti. So they had to, they light they lit their lamps. And then they sprinkled butter with yogurt. And then they finish after they finished their Mongol arti, then they began their work. They have to turn the butter, make the butter butter make butter from the yogurt. Yeah, if they turn the yogurt, then they get butter. So the lamps that which they lit, they were reflecting. They were reflect that made and they reflected the light and it made their ornaments look brighter. And when they're churning the butter, then they have to move, they're moving their arms and they're moving their earrings. And their bangles and their breasts, everything was moving. And kumkum powder came on their faces and made their faces red. Made their faces look like the rising sun in the morning. And while they were churning the butter, that, that time they were singing the songs about Krishna. So the two sound vibrations mixed together. 
There's the sound of all their ornaments and their movements, and there's the sound of their singing the songs about Krishna. So these two sound vibrations, they mix together. And when they mixed together, they went up in the sky and they purified all the atmosphere. Spiritual sound vibration can purify the whole world. So after sunrise, the gopis came to offer their respect to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And when they came there, they saw the golden chariot of Uddhava at the doorway. So, you know, they, they, you don't see a golden chariot in the village like Vrindavan very often. So the gopis were surprised. They were asking each other, what was this chariot? The gopis were asking, whose chariot is it? What's it doing here? And some of the gopis even thought maybe a Krura has come back. Because a Krura had come before and taken away Krishna. So they thought maybe a Krura has returned. Of course, the gopis, they don't like a Karura. Because a Karura had taken away Krishna from them, so they don't have a good mood towards a Karura. And a Karura, they knew him to be also a servant of Kamsa that he'd come to Vrindavan as a servant of Kamsa. And Akrura had taken Krishna to the, to the city of Mathura. So they thought maybe Akrura must have come back again. He must have some other thing he wants to do some other cruel plan. But then the gopis thought, anyway, we're dead now anyway, so he cannot do any harm to us. He has taken away our master, our, the supreme master, Lord Krishna, has been taken from us. So we've become de we're dead people now. So what can a Krura do to us now? He can't do any harm to us now. So the gopis were talking like this, and at that time, Uddhava finished 
his morning prayers and his bath bathing and prayers and chanting, and he came out to meet them. So that's the end of chapter 46 about Udva visits Vrindavan. So we'll go on to chapter 47, Krishna's message to the gopis. So when the gopis saw Uddhava, they saw that his features were almost just like Krishna. They could understand he was a good, he must be a great devotee of Krishna. He had long arms. Maybe his arms were down to his knees. And his eyes were just like lotus flowers. And he was dressed in yellow cloth. And he had a garland of lotus flowers. And his face was very beautiful. He, he was actually already liberated. He had the Sarupya Mukti liberation. It means he had achieved, well, he had achieved the same bodily features as Krishna. So he just, he looked almost just like Krishna. So in, in the, because Krishna was away from the, the gopis, the gopis had become Uh, ever since Krishna left the gopis, the gopis made a point every day to go and see Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. And they would go there to Mother Yashoda's house early in the morning. And they knew Mother Yashoda was very heartbroken that Krishna had left. So the gopis would come every day to pay their respects to Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And when Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj would see all the gopis, they would know these are the friends of Krishna. And they would remember Krishna also, and this way they would be satisfied. And the gopis would also be happy because they would be seeing Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And the gopis would be happy because they would be seeing Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. 
So the gopis saw that Uddhava was representing Krishna in his the same bodily features. So they they thought he must be surrendered completely to Krishna. So they began to think, who is this boy? He looks just like Krishna. He has the same eyes like lotus petals. And he has the same raised nose. And he has a beautiful face. And he is smiling in the same way as Krishna. He looks just like Krishna. He looks like Shamsundar, the beautiful blackish boy. And he's even dressed like Krishna. So where does this boy come from? And who is the fortunate girl who has him for her husband? So this is the way the gopis, they were talking to each other. So they were very anxious to know about Unava. And because they were simple women, village girls, they they all surrounded Uddhava. <coughs> then the gopis heard that Uddhava had a message from Krishna. So they became very happy to, and they, they called Krishna to a quiet place. They called Uddhava to a quiet place. And they got Uddhava a nice sitting place. They wanted, all the gopis wanted to talk to Uddhava without any trouble from anybody else. They didn't want to get embarrassed if other people would come by and hear how they were talking to Uddhava. So first they welcomed Uddhava, they gave, they spoke very nice, polite words to him. And they told him, we know that you are a very confidential friend of Krishna. And that's why he sent you to Vrindavan. He sent you to give comfort to his father and mother. We know family affection is very strong. Even great sages who become renounced they cannot give up their family affection. 
นะแต่พวกคนที่อยู่ในระดับชีวิตสลาโลกเนี่ยเขาก็ยังไม่สามารถยกเลิกสมาชิกในครอบครัวได้ยกเลิกความยึดติดที่มีต่อสมาชิกในครอบครัวได้ even though they have renounced the world sometimes they will think of their family members ถึงแม้เขาได้สละทั้งโลกมาแล้วเนี่ยบางครั้งเนี่ยเขายังจะคิดถึงคนในครอบครัวเขาอยู่ so Krishna sent you to his father and mother แล้วคริสต์นาเนี่ยได้เลือกท่านแล้วก็ได้ส่งท่านมาหาบิดามารดาของเรา But we know Krishna. Apart from his father and mother, Krishna doesn't have any other business in Vrindavan. He has gone to the city to Mathura. He doesn't need to worry about Vrindavan anymore. Vrindavan is only a village. And Vrindavan is just full of cows and cows and ground fields for the cows to graze. So Krishna has gone to the city, so he doesn't care about the cows anymore. And we, I, we don't think he has anything. We don't think he wants to have anything to do with people except. For his family members, he's only interested in his family members. He's not interested in anybody else in Vrindavan. Because deal, to, we we don't deal usually. The only people we care about is our own family. We don't worry about others. Or maybe, though, if we are interested in others apart from the family, it's to get something from them. Otherwise, why should we worry about them? We just care about our family. Just like a person will be attached to his wives, his wife, or others who are in the family. And if a person is attached to the wives of others, then that's for sense gratification. And the gopis said, just like when the bees come to take the honey from the flowers. As, as long as they get the honey from the flower, they're interested in the flower. But as soon as they get the honey from the flower, then they fly away. They forget about the flower. Yeah, 
just like a prostitute. She does not care for a man if he's lost all of his money. If he has any, if he has money, then she's interested in him. But as soon as he loses all his money, then she loses her interest in him. Because she's a, she's a prostitute. She's only there to get money from the man. Or another example, just like a government is, is supposed to give protection to the citizens. But if the government cannot give protection, then the citizens all want to run away from the country. Yeah, they will just want to get out of the country, go some other place. Because they know the country is not going to protect them, it's not going to help them. Another example, just like a student is studying, getting his education. But as soon as he finishes education, he gives up his relationship with the teachers in the school. Right, once you finish education, you never go to school again, you never meet the teachers again, finished. Another example, a priest, after taking his reward, he does some worship, somebody hires him to do worship, so he gets paid by the, work, the man. The man hires the priest to do the worship. As soon as he gives them the money, then he finishes the relationship. Another example. When the fruit season is over, when there's no more fruit on the trees, then the birds are no longer interested in the tree. And another example, just like you bring a guest to your home and then you feed him, you give him a meal. And then after he meet, eats his meal, then he gets up and he goes, finished. And then after a forest fire, there's no green grass anywhere. So all the animals which lived in the forest, they used to eat the green grass. All the deer and the different animals were living in the forest, they were eating the green grass. 
ล้วก็สับตัวหนึ่งที่เป็นกวางแล้วก็สับตัวหนึ่งที่เขากินกินหญ้ากินต้นไม้เนี่ยกินต้นไม้สีเขียวเนี่ย But after the fire, then there's no more grass, so the the animals they leave the forest. Another example is just like young man and a young woman, and the young man he's enjoying his young girlfriend. But after he enjoys her, then he goes. He leaves her. Finished. Okay. I've had. I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed. Now I'm going. So like this, the gopis they were accusing Krishna. They gave many examples. So Uddhava understood that the gopis in Vrindavan they were all very absorbed in thinking of Krishna. And they were always remembering Krishna's childhood and his activities there. So the gopis were talking to Uddhava. They were telling him all about Krishna. And they forgot all about their duties, what they were supposed to do in their homes. And they even forgot about themselves. They were so much thinking of Krishna. Then one of the gopis, whose name was Srimati Radharani, she was very, very special. So she was an, very absorbed in thinking of Krishna. And she began to talk to the bee. So there was a bee flying there, and it was and it was flying around Radharani's feet. So the gopis were talking with Uddhava, but Srimati Radharani, she was talking to the bee. And she took that bee to be a messenger from Krishna. And she says to that bee, she said, "Oh bee, you are always drinking the honey from flower to flower." That's why you become a messenger of Krishna. Because Krishna is of the same nature as you. Then Radharani says to the bee, "I can see on your mustache. I can see the red color, the red powder of kumkum." 
สามารถเห็นหนวดของเจ้าได้ว่าหนวดของเจ้าเนี่ยมีผมสีแดงจากกุ้มกุ้มเนี่ยติดอยู่ and that kum kum powder was actually on the flower garland of Krishna แล้วผมกุ้มกุ้มนี้เนี่ยมาจากมาลัยของกริชนา Because that flower garland had been pressed against the breasts of some gopis. These these other girls, they're my competitor. So you feel very proud, I know. B, you feel very proud. Because you've touched that garland which Krishna is wearing. And that's why your mustache has become so red. And you have come here with a message for me. You're anxious. You want to touch my feet. But I want to tell you, B, don't touch me. I don't want any messages from your unreliable master. You are the unreliable servant of an unreliable master. So in this way, Radharani was talking to the. Bumblebee. Now, it may be that Radharani was talking in this way, just to criticize this man Uddhava. Because the other gopis, like Srimati, Srimati Radharani, she saw that Uddhava's bodily features were just like Krishna. Oh. But she also saw that Uddhava was. Was like almost equal to Krishna. So she was Uddha, Srimati Radharani by speaking in this way. She was telling that this Uddhava is not reliable. Just as Krishna is not reliable, this man Uddhava is also not reliable. So Srimati Radharani is going to give reasons why she was not satisfied with Krishna. And she was not satisfied with also his messenger. So we'll stop there today. Okay. Are there any questions?
Shaya Madhuji has a question. Chaleha. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dadabar Panam, please accept my humble obeisances on Holy Sila Prabhupan. Um, Ajanaha. พอดีว่าพี่อาจจะทําคอนเทนต์เพิ่มเติมเกี่ยวกับการที่เราถวายตะเกียงกับเอ่อหลอดดาโมดาอ่ะค่ะคือมีคนไทยอ่ะจะแ
Yes, that's true, that's what they say. From Mayapur's a place of mercy. Because Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. So Mayapur is non different from Lord Chaitanya. It's his place of eternal pastimes. So it's a very, very merciful place. The, just by laying down at night to take rest, you get the benefit of offering obeisances. Mm. Very powerful, the holy dawn. So in Vrindavan it's more strict, yes. But you get more mercy if you can, if you can, you can get also great benefit in Vrindavan. If you do nice service, you get great benefit, you can make great spiritual advancement. But you have to be more advanced, you have to be very serious to be in Vrindavan. It's not for neophyte devotees. But Mayapur is Odarya Dham, it's a place of great mercy. So they say, they say before you go to live in Vrindavan, you should first of all live in Mayapur and get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, and then you become qualified to go and live in Vrindavan. Okay. What's your question, Archana? Okay, Garaj. Uh, my question is, uh, when when Gopi they see Uddhava, Uddhava have a, like he look very similar to Krishna, but they they are not like even uh, confused because sometimes we can see that. Uh, when we are so much in love with someone and when we see people also, uh, we get their face on them, you know. So it's not affecting them how give, yeah, like that. I don't understand. So Uddhava looks so much like Krishna, but still it's not affecting gopis to uh, like, you know, think that, oh, it's Krishna or something like that. Well, like Prabhupada said, they understand him to be a, a devotee of Krishna, and that he's surrendered to Krishna. Actually, he is a relative of Krishna. So the gopis have a special respect for Uddhava. They understand him as being the representative of Krishna. Mm. 
So you, we're going to hear more. We have a long chapter, this one, the message. Okay, but uh, no more questions? No. Okay, so then we'll stop here tonight. Okay. So thank you very much, Archana, for translation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank and you. Thank all the devotees for their questions and listening. And have a good week. Take care. Okay. Thank you to you also, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Best wishes to all the devotees there. Okay. Any, th any news about uh, uh, Lil Avati? Oh, no, Guru Maharaj. I was thinking to talk to her because last time also you asked. Oh. So, yeah, maybe after this class I will talk to her. Yeah, tell us. I didn't, I didn't go to one cat temple also, that's why. Tell them, I would like to know what's happening. Sure, sure. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Gorbhakti Vrinda Ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna.